Right, today I'd like to talk to you about the Reynolds number. Uh, the Reynolds number is named after uh, Osborne Reynolds, who was a British physicist or fluid mechanics uh, scientist. And he was, uh, did experiments in Manchester on flow of water through pipes. And he discovered that the way in which the water flowed depended on the size of the pipe, the diameter of the pipe, and, and the speed of the water. And he characterized this, these different types of flow in terms of a number, a number that's dimensionless. It doesn't, it's just a plain number. It doesn't have kilograms or meters per second in it or anything like that. It's just a plain number. So I've got a pipe here. This is the kind of pipe that Osborne Reynolds would have used. And you can see this has got a, a, a diameter. So he was using pipes like this and passing water through it. And he also, to look at the way the water was flowing in detail, introduced ink through a tiny jet. And he discovered that at low flow rates, uh, the ink jet just remained a perfect, if he injected it at the center of the tube at this end, the water's flowing through, then the ink jet remained a perfectly nice narrow line. But when the water was flowing above a certain velocity, which he called a critical velocity, then uh, the, the flow became turbulent. So what we do is we take the velocity of the flow and the diameter, or more, more usually the radius of the pipe, and so we end up with an expression looking like this. So the Reynolds number, not to confuse it with other symbols like resistance, we normally use Re, that's just equal to the, the velocity of flow of the water in the tube multiplied by the radius of the tube and then divided by, and this is the tricky bit, the viscosity of the water. All fluids have a certain amount of viscosity. Water is a fluid, it's got a viscosity. And the kinematic viscosity of water is an easy number to remember. It's one divided by a million, or 10 to the minus six, as we say as physicists. And air has actually, when you take into account the fact that, that air has got a lower density than water, uh, that has actually got a higher kinematic viscosity. Uh, the viscosity of air is about one divided by 100,000. Engineers, fluid engineers, need to know about the nature of the flow of water in pipes and around bends for that matter. All of that's very important to them because it tells them how much water they can get, get, get through the pipe. The other place it comes in, of course, is, is, is anything that moves through air. When objects like cars or aeroplanes or ships flow through fluids, they set up behind them uh, vortices and when the, the flow is fast enough or the objects are big enough, they, they set up big turb turbulent wakes behind them. And inside those vortices and turbulent wakes, the water is all churning around. And what's happening then is that the engine that's propelling the boat or the airplane or whatever, the energy of the fuel of that is, is actually being converted into this, into this turbulence. One of the, one of the, there's a beautiful illustration of vortex pairs being formed of a NASA photograph. I, it's, a, it's a volcano. It, this, this thing was photographed from satellite with uh, a, a, a wind just a, a westerly wind flowing over it. And you can see a beautiful uh, trail of vortices from behind this uh, volcano. And uh, these vortices uh, form, tend to form in pairs. One of the vortices is going around in an anti-clockwise direction to you, and the other one is going around in a clockwise direction to you. So these things are called vortex-anti-vortex -vortex pairs and they were first studied in detail by uh, a Hungarian or German scientist called von Kármán and these things are called von Kármán vortex streets because they're like houses on opposite side going d down a street. Now that is a truly huge Reynolds number so not only are we forming pairs of vortices in this case, we've got quite a lot of turbulent air in those vortices, in and around those vortices. And we see the vortices in, those, in that particular picture very beautifully because uh, the cloud patterns are picking up this circular motion, the clockwise and anti-clockwise motion of the airflow inside the vortices. So that's one of the biggest Reynolds numbers you can, you can see on Earth. 
Now, you can get bigger Reynolds numbers than that if you look at the great red spot of Jupiter, for example. The great red spot of Jupiter's got a radius comparable with the Earth, so much bigger than the volcano, and the wind speeds on Jupiter are much higher as well. A few years ago, we had a couple of good students, uh, really good students, doing this project. Uh, it was called Fun with Flat Fluids, and this is an experiment that you can do. I picked it up on the web website of Martin Rutgers, and he's, what he's doing as an experiment is he's forming a, a soap film, and then as the water's flowing vertically down uh, the soap film, what Gillian is doing is putting in a tiny obstacle, something a few millimetres across, into the flow, and then you can see the video of the vortex street forming behind the object. 